And it says, we are live. I'm here. You're beautiful. And Starscream Wife is coughing. It's time for Godbot Goes Live. I, of course, am your most humble of hosts, Dennis Moulton, a.k.a. Godbot. As always, man, please like, comment, share, of course, subscribe. And while you're at it, light them up, baby, and hit that notification bell. It helps me out a ton. It lets you know when content of all sorts goes up here on the channel. Check out Machinery of Man, the Everything Factor, all the groups that I'm either a mod or an admin for, as well as all my social media links. All that in the description down below. Uh, if you're in a position to help the channel to grow, you can use the donate link. Check us out on Patreon. See what we offer to you through Teespring. Or, of course, hit the join button right here on YouTube to become a channel member, baby. You may hear Starscream Wife cough. Um, she has been battling a cold. Just a cold. That's all. Nothing more. Nothing to be worried about. Um, and she's she's on the mend, but there's still a, like a lingering kind of raspy cough. I keep telling her. Keep Flynn. it. It's phlegm, yeah, that's true. She does get a lot of phlegm. Oddly, when she eats uh, things with cheese, like uh, poutine, and if you don't know what poutine is, or some people call it poutine, I think. It's a weird way of saying it, but apparently that's the right way of saying it. I don't know. Uh, if you're not familiar with what it is, for some weird reason, uh, it's fries with gravy and cheese. She adores it. I think there's more gravy and cheese than there is like blood and organs in her body, but... Uh, it does give her phlegm, and when you're recovering from a little bit of a um, uh, like head cold, you know, it adds to it, right? So I'm just getting things set up. Hope you guys are having a tremendous, tremendous week. You know, I always hope you guys have a tremendous week. We, of course, are heading into the weekend, and you may notice that I am wearing a orange shirt today and that's for a very special reason here in canada today is actually our our newest um statutory federal holiday i'm going to talk about that in just a couple of minutes when i get set up here just a, a little bit it was, a, it was a tight squeeze today. For one of the scraplets today, we uh, went and bought him a new uh, bed and bed frames where we were putting that together. So I am a little bit behind the eight ball, but I was late last week. Didn't want to be late this week. You guys are just too important to me, man. Just far too important. You may notice that I am still uh, kind of getting used to the light and my setup. So um, I don't know if tonight's lighting is good or not. Nor do I know. Hold on. There's something else I have to do here. Oh, my goodness. Hold on. Whew. What what a set like this is me like I'm professional I'm I'm professional right <laughs> I'm not I'm not professional you're gonna have to bear with me a second here guys um let me just make sure something here I don't even know if I was talking then and. Um, if there was anything there, hold on. That's not what I wanted to do. Um, do I have this set up correctly? I don't know. I don't know. Let's go. Armor Convoy, happy you're here. Ken, happy you're here. Hey, Blue Raccoon. Hey, Caldeo. Hey, Marcus. Uh, what's up, man? Today, we haven't stopped. We're going to get into a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, get some chicken soup and tea for her. Uh, she does like chicken soup. Not really much of a tea fan. Uh, hey, Gabriel. Do I have Studio Series 56? I assume you mean 86. Uh, Leader Shockwave, DNA Design, released Upgrade Kids. I, no, I, I didn't get... I, you mean the movie Shockwave? No, I didn't. Um, the last Shockwave I bought is Siege, and I overpaid for that. That's the last Shockwave I'm buying. Uh, hey, Vector. Um, 
<laughs> Putin. Uh, I hear you, Kildio. Uh, this week is almost over. Uh, uh, happy to see you here, Ultra Megatronus. As we go down here, let's see. Uh, hey, Warren. Uh, it is a nice shirt. We're going to talk about it in just a little bit. Uh, hey, Bri Bri. Manitoba, happy to see you here, buddy. Uh, our buddy Dragonfly, um, Classics Bumblebee, Energon, Iron, uh, Ironhide. Cool, neat. Um, I appreciate Bri Bri adding in here on the old Legends class. Much obliged, buddy. Much obliged. I just have to, um, where is it? I have to go. Here and I gotta go here and I'm sorry this is taking so long, guys. But um, I think I think that has everything set up the way I want it set up. Um, okay, Oof. and I can close that. Whoa! All right. I know you guys love it when I'm setting stuff up. I know you guys love it when I'm not quite prepared. Hey, Nate. Happy to see you here, buddy. Uh, just got social security phone scam. Oh, man. Listen. I mean, those things are usually so obvious. Don't fall for them, you know? Uh, I don't mind if it takes so long. Uh, we get to chat more with you. That's true, man. That's true. Okay. So, first things first. Today in Canada, as I said, it is our newest federal holiday. Um, however, this is more of a reflective type of holiday. It is a very important uh, day. It is the day of truth and reconciliation. Or if you are French, it is uh, la journée nationale de la vérité et de la réconciliation. Um, they are uh, now recognizing this day as a federal statutory holiday. It is a day to reflect on all of the injustices and atrocities of the residential school system in Canada. If you don't know that system, I do certainly encourage you to uh, look into it and how um, the uh, like culture and rights of uh, indigenous uh, people in Canada were absolutely violated um, and done so in an institutional institutionalized way with the church and the government of Canada at the time. We now, of course, realize that that is wrong. It is very much related to uh, you know human rights, civil rights, uh, dignity, and decency. Our friends who, for example, live in the U.S., uh, perhaps your most closest type of day for reflection on social injustices might be something like uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Day. Uh, however, tied in with this is the longstanding tradition of Orange Shirt Day. Now, it has gotten new prominence over the last ah, year or two, uh, especially since a lot of news came out regarding things like the residential school system and the whole movement of every child matters. And every year a new orange shirt design is um, presented and done by indigenous artists and uh, myself and Starscream wife all day. We have been wearing ours. This is this year's design. Uh, every child matters, as you can see um, it, the reason for the orange color is it ties into the story. And I want to make sure that I get her name right. It ties into um, an account and a story from, um, I wrote her name down. Where did I write her? Webstead. Yeah, Phyllis, uh, Phyllis, Phyllis Jack Webstead. And uh, Webstead, sorry. And when she was taken to a residential school and her new orange shirt was taken. So now it has become a symbol of that. Um you know, kind of a dark part of our history. Uh, we are very happy that it is getting recognized um, with Starscream Wife's heritage. We very much see this as a personal day. So it's an important holiday, an important day, and long overdue becoming recognized, um, not just as a day, but as uh, a federal holiday. So if you're wondering why I'm wearing this, that's why I'm wearing it. And it's very important, very personal to us. Um, so that's that's in behind. And I do encourage you all, wherever you are the world over, um, to, you know, all you got to do, man, search it up online, residential school history, and you will find an awful lot. Uh, the late, great Gord Downey, lead singer of the Tragically Hip, was very much an advocate for indigenous rights and uh, reparations for um, injustices of the past. And um, yeah, it, it's something that 
just as a citizen of the world, we should all be aware of. Uh, so that's kind of the serious note out of the way. Tonight, we're going to be talking a little bit about Star, um, Victory Saber. We're going to be talking about the Golden Disc Collection. We're going to be talking about some reveals uh, that came out and some news that came out uh, from Kang Toys, from Dr. Wu, from Fans Toys, for example. We have a little bit of an unboxing to do. We, of course, have our trivia provided to us by our good buddy, Dragonfly, tonight. Um, and what else do we have here? Um, I think that'll be about it, of course. Uh, yeah, I think that'll be about it tonight. So, kicking things off in the news. Now, we'll get back to you guys very shortly. Getting uh, into the news, however, we saw images of Masterpiece Thundercracker. I kind of like that they went with the gray on the torso rather than the silver because... They're going for hyper cartoon accuracy and on the cartoon, it would have been more of a gray, if not a white that was supposed to mimic silver. I like that, but I do feel like the blue is a little possibly too bright, a little washed out to me. And the lips on the face, man, just seem like they're getting ready to pucker up and give you a big kiss. There's something about the lips that really stood out to me on his smirk. Um, I like Thundercracker, uh, uh, but I'm not sold on this seeker mold. I'm not an MP guy anyway. You guys discovered that earlier the week. If you watch the, uh, Toys R Us exclusive MP9 Rodimus Prime that I did and the fix of that, the issues on that. I'm so happy for the sake of Maximal 10 that I was able to get it fixed. But um, I don't know. The the Thundercracker, eh, eh. Dr. Wu, that brings us to Dr. Wu. And their reveal of a super deformed, a chibi style, if you will, Trypticon, very, very adorable. It's a grayscale thus far. It does do a battle station mode. It does do a city mode and a dinosaur mode. And then this cube mode that they call an Energon cube. It's, it's not really an Energon cube. You see, it's just like a mechanical little brick. But this is very small. I think it's very adorable. There is a drone that very much mimics full tilt. I don't think that transforms. This is small. Um, it's for a very niche type of collector. But I think it's cute what they're doing. And Dr. Wu has done some nice uh, stuff with their actual kind of character offering. So... I think that, that might be a good way to go. Fans Toys showed off their Cerebros. It is the head of their about four foot tall Fort Max. I will be shocked if the Fort Max actually ever sees the light of day. I would imagine the price would be somewhere around 1500 to two grand American. I don't know where people would put a four foot tall Fort Max. Of course, then people will complain and say, we need an eight foot tall Unicron now. Uh, where does it stop, right? Um... <laughs> I think it's a neat concept. I think it's neat to see. I would never in a billion years get it. And I wouldn't want just Cerebros who turns to the head. And it looks like his saber becomes like a, a neck piece, I guess. What are you going to do with a Fort Max head? You know, um, I think you need the whole thing for it to be worth it. Do I think the whole thing's going to get made? I'm skeptical. If you're in on a cool, I think it's a cool looking Cerebros. I'm not a fan's toys fan, as we all know. But if it's for you, neat. This is one of those things I would be intrigued to see it in somebody else's house i would never in a billion years want it for hours but to each their own great looking cerebros if you're in for a four foot i probably overly engineered overly complex fortress maximus i don't know I i'm skeptical i'm interested to see it but i'm skeptical it's like uh that 3d printed like life size or six foot version or whatever of metroplex like it's awe inspiring to see but i'd never want it there's a like a four foot custom made Devastator. I'd never wanted. It's cool to see, but like it was sitting on a sofa. What do you do with that? You know, um, I don't know if you have excessive room in your house, I guess, and money to burn. Um, but to each their own. The chess set, the chess set that was a Kickstarter failed. Not even remotely shocked. You wanted six six hundred to seven hundred dollars US for a chess set. I get it. It's cool and custom and all this stuff, but like, no. It's a chess set. Um, I'm sorry. it's It didn't make any sense. I'm not surprised that that failed. Um, let's see. More shakeup at Paramount with the exodus of Emma Watts. She is out. And she was, I believe, the head of the Transformers films uh, currently. I don't know. What will we see from her in the future? Who knows? What will we see from Paramount in the future? Who knows? Right now, it's a very interesting time because there's a big shakeup going on there. Speaking of third-party offerings, Shockwave Labs has an upgrade kit of LED cannons for the Shattered Glass Megatron. I don't think I would need it, though I like Shockwave Labs uh, and what they do. This is one of those, like, we have something else you can add on to it, and there will definitely be people that will say, hey, 
that makes it closer to the original shattered glass mold. Um, I'm cool with that. I want it. And I get it. If you want it, cool. To me, it's not worth it, but I totally understand somebody who would get it. I think it's a solid set from Shockwave Labs. Um, let's see. Hasbro is uh, now starting up a new Division 4 games to make triple A games. I don't even know what triple A games are. I think they're like for mobile and PC or something. I don't know. Uh, but triple A games, they have some big talent working on it, apparently, uh, as part of this division. Namely, uh, for example, people and companies that um, worked on the Batman Arkham series, which is arguably the best Batman series that they ever did. So uh, will we see something interesting here? Maybe. Apparently their first project is going to be a G.I. Joe, like third person action and adventure, maybe shoot em up style type of thing. We'll, we'll see when it goes to Transformers, I suppose. Um, everybody knows that the measuring stick for Transformers really is the War for Cybertron, Fall of Cybertron uh, games from High Moon. I think High Moon do done those. And maybe Devastation. It would need to kind of live up to that. Anything less than that, people are going to say it's not good enough. I think. Um, you know, you got standard bearers to go by, right? Uh, TFCon Toronto tickets on sale. I don't live in Toronto. Got no way to get to Toronto. Won't be going to Toronto. Um, but to those who can and will, cool. A uh, little bit of news, uh, news about Rise of the Beast. A uh, employee, an animal handler in Peru, said that they saw Wheeljack there, Cheetor, RC, Rhinox, which is a one that we suspected. And I'm kind of glad now to hear an actual name there. Mirage and Optimus Prime. I don't know how many Autobots there will be, but I mean, we we have Mirage, we have Bumblebee, we have Optimus for sure, RC, I guess. So those are some names that were kind of thrown out there. Some interesting names, but nothing really surprising. I would kind of expect them to be in Peru and probably as part of the climax. What I do find interesting there with that list is we don't have Optimus Primal there. We don't hear tell of Scourge or... Really, any of the other Decepticons, Terracons, none of the Predacons, all of that seems to be Autobots and um, Maximals. So I find it interesting. That, you know, it doesn't mean anything. Who knows? But I find it interesting that, you know, while I have been saying and guessing maybe Peru is where the climax takes place, maybe it's not. Maybe it's, maybe it's not. Maybe it's where the Autobots and Maximals meet. Who knows? Let's go back here. We're going to check in uh, with you guys here a little bit. Um, hey, Mike, happy you're here, buddy. Hey, Devlin. And I'm probably going to miss some stuff. I apologize if I do. Uh, I'm, yeah, we talked about Legacy Menasaur last week, Gabriel. I'm not in for it. I mean, if you are cool, I'm not remotely interested in redoing combiners again. Um, Maybe I'd consider like a Menasaur replacement if they are the exact same scale as Combiner Wars. If they're going to be a new scale, I'm out. Um, Ultra Megatronus, I mess with these. I mess with scammers. A lot of people do mess with scammers. There's a guy who messes with scammers that I've seen do some TED Talks. Um, James Veach, I think is his name. The guy's hilarious. If you've never looked him up, he's worth looking up. The guy is hilarious. He's a comedian, obviously, but it's really funny. Um... I'm down with the Brits. Uh, I would say that you're from Scotland. Uh, that's funny. Um, thank you, Dragonfly. About the shirt. Um, Manitoba. Manitoba would know about today, I'm sure. It is an excellent cause, Bob, right? Absolutely. I have the Golden Disc Collection order. We're going to talk about that, too. Uh, yeah, you know, I like usually we try to keep it pretty light around here, except for my rants that uh, Master Fire likes to point out, but uh, this is a this is too important. I, it was a time where I just wanted to explain like where what this was and stuff. It's too important to our family, you know. My my wife has um, some, uh, you know, has a strong uh, indigenous heritage herself, so it, it's it's very personal to us. Um, I don't want to get into it too much here, but it is very personal to us. Uh, a lot of people know Terry Fox. He uh, lost a leg and tried to run across Canada to raise money for cancer research. He raised, he was hoping for a million dollars, raised 25 million. Uh, the Terry Fox run is still done nowadays in the modern uh, era. Um, he made it about halfway across Canada, uh, running with an artificial leg. And, um, 
you know, since then a lot of people have followed suit. What a lot of people don't know is he, one of, you know, considered a Canadian hero, he himself has indigenous uh, roots with the uh, Métis. So like, it's amazing where all of this links to. And I, I would venture to say that a lot of these issues and a lot of these things are not only Canadian, it's just it's high, been highlighted so much in Canada because of the residential school system, but it applies to a lot of North America. It's just so well known here. You know, it's unfortunate, but it's well known. And I'm glad now it's well known. Um, let's see. I did get pterosaur. Let's see. News of universal. No news of universal collision uh, at this time. I, I, I've been at, I'm still playing catch up with my my job job. I'm lucky. Honestly, I'm getting you guys content at all. Just today, it was even though today was a day off, it was so insanely busy that I was literally rushing to get here on time. And I still got a bunch of stuff that I do after here, which is why I'm trying to get through stuff. Uh, let's see as we go down here. Um, let's see. Got a Rodimus Prime and trailer at Walmart. No problems. Excellent, man. I'm happy that you got one. I like the idea as far as I'm concerned. Um, that Fort Max idea seems so cool. I have no room for it, though. And I think that's going to be the thing, right? I don't think a lot of people are going to have room for it. Though I did hear that the pre-orders for the head sold out really quickly. I'm not shocked. I, I mean, like, Starscream Wife doesn't really say much of anything as long as I keep the collection clean and that the way. And I do have some things now, actually, that I got to get cleaned up. It's just, again, finding the time, you know? Like, I got to get some, some more shelving and stuff. But even I know, like, there are certain limits. And the idea of, like, a four-foot Fortress Maximus, while I think it's cool and I'd like to see it at someone else's house, there's also a part of me that's, like, it is so obnoxious. It is the most obnoxious Transformer thing that I've ever seen because it, it, it there's no way for it to be subtle because it's so big. You know what I mean? So, like, I'm both, like, that's obnoxious but in awe at the same time. It's a really weird place to be. It's weird feelings to have, man. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm happy with my Titans Return one, Bri Bri. I mean, to each their own. There will be people that will have it and stuff, and to each their own. Let's see. I'm waiting for pipes. Yeah, pipes would be a nice. Um, conflicted on Golden Disc. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. Uh, I I play chess, but I don't want to pay, spend, or I have played chess, I should say, but I don't want to spend $700 on it, or in your case, 700 quid. Like, no, I get it, man. I, I get it, man. If they wanted to get a toy accurate Unicron, uh, look up the lazy eyebrow uh, joke on how big Unicron should be. <laughs> Everything he said was right. It's as simple as that. Um, hey, Bedford. You heard of Titan class? I believe... Four Foot Fortress Maximus is known as divorce class. Yeah, probably. Probably. Like, I, I know my limits. I know our space, you know. Um, yeah, GTA, Call of Duty, Last of Us are all considered AAA games. Ah, oh, okay, there you go. And all are good games. Um, let's see. I'll pass on Puffer and Road Rage. We're going down here. Uh, hey, Big M. Yeah, thousand to twelve hundred US. I think that that's, I think that's low balling. I mean, maybe, maybe you're right, Big M. I don't know, but I feel like that's even low balling, man. Uh, clamp down and generation selects blue streak. I don't know why you said those, but okay, cool. Okay, so let's keep going here. Um, selects Galvatron showed up here today uh, in Toys R Us of all places, which surprised me. I, I don't need that Galvatron. Uh, to each their own. But I do think that something like that Galvatron is perfect for selects. It's not exactly mainline, and one could ar make the argument uh, of it as a Galvatron 2, or maybe somebody would say, no, I prefer something that homages the G1, like toy offering rather than the animation offering. So, like, I understand the market for it, but I don't feel like it's a main thing. So, I think it's appropriate for selects. I, I support that as selects. Unique Toys showed up. Great. I like Unique Toys. Thought they were gone. Unique Toys showed up and they showed off their really excellent Dark of the Moon Megatron. It looks great. 32 centimeters in height. 23 ratchets, baby. 23 ratchets. 
I, wasn't it unique toys that done Perot kill and like they blew that out of the water. It was amazing. I expect this to be much the same thing. I don't know if they did the Galvatron too. Maybe somebody could tell me if they did the Galvatron too. Um, let's see here. The Ravage, get this. The Pulse Ravage two pack with the Beast Wars Ravage that uses the mold of Cheetor from Kingdom with some changes obviously and the g1 cassette ravage apparently has been cited in canada at eb games now where it is it was taken off the shelves because the street date is october the 22nd but a couple of people managed to have the store sell it but for the most part they've been taken off the shelves again if the store does even have it i said that i was getting the trans art ravage specifically because of how hard you were making the pulse ravage to get and Guess what? There was no announcement that it was going to be offered at EB Games. None. Zero. It was no announcement as to how it's going to be offered anywhere else globally. All that was ever said was it's going to be Pulse exclusive. You shot yourself in the foot there as far as I'm concerned because I'm not double dipping. I am happy with the TransArt one. And though this is in store, I'm not getting it. I'm not getting it for two reasons. One, because you didn't care enough to even bother to announce how it was going to be released. And two, it's a deluxe. And it's a G1 cassette. Here, a deluxe is now $34.99 plus tax, so 40 bucks. And the G1 cassettes, when they came out in Canada, my understanding was that they were $11. So you have, say, $40 and $11. That's $51. This is selling for $70. I, I don't know, but $72.99. No. I, I, no. The trans art I ordered from overseas and with shipping, it was still cheaper than that. I don't know where that pricing came from. If you want it, cool. Go to EB. They got it. But $72.99 is, I don't understand that. It's a leader price for a deluxe and a cassette. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. To each their own, it's not for me. GameStop, because of course EB Games here is also now slowly transitioning to GameStop. Uh, they showed off a Soundwave helmet that has lights and sound, like LED lights and sound. Even Starscream wife laughed, and she said, that's awesome. And then I, she said, how much is that? And I said, I don't know. I think it's like $129.99. She was like, oh, no, it's not so awesome. It's a helmet. But, I mean, it's like any of these helmets, right? I, I can't say it's not worth it. The molding is there. You have electronics and all this. stuff. So I get it. I understand why it's a big ticket item. But much like when you see the Optimus helmet and the Bumblebee helmet, and I think the Megatron one a little while ago, and um, like the Iron Man helmet and stuff. Like, I get it. It's not for me, but I get it. And if you are somebody, for example, who does cosplay and you're going to do like a Soundwave cosplay, this might be the best Soundwave head to get. So I I, I totally, totally understand it. Uh, Kang Toys showed off finally their first picture. Now, granted, it was the torso. Both parts of the torso was all grayscale. But they finally showed off an image of what is basically the combined mode for their Thunder King slash Predator King looks gorgeous. Those who went in on it, like I know Kato did, for example, and I know some other people did. Those who went in on it, man, sweet. You're, I think you're going to be happy. I think he's going to be really pointy, spiky, might even hurt your hands putting the guy together. If he functions well, if the ratchets are good, if the range of motion is good, if things not knocking into each other, I think that this could be a real winner. Will it be enough to dethrone? feral rex as the king of kings we're gonna see we're gonna see but i think the kang toys looks interesting i'm not sure how i feel about a sixth member but we'll see when it, uh, it you know when it all works out in the wash but i like the look of it we also saw some images of the upcoming tigatron both excited and nervous i'm excited because i like the size better than the original tigatron and i do want the big cat to be bigger nervous because i detest that um, uh, Cheetor mold. I don't think it's good. Not because it wasn't engineered well. Not because it doesn't have clever tricks. It does. But because for Deluxe, they thin the plastic too much. Is that going to be the case here? I'm hoping not. I'm hoping it will be more successful for Tigatron. Time will tell. Time will tell. Uh, and we have two more bits of news, but I'm going to check in with you guys before we cover that because the two bits, bits of news is some golden disc stuff and some victory saver stuff. Um, 
Triple H. And you got the reference. I saw I saw that Master Fire. Good for you, buddy. Good for you. Uh, let's see here. Um, go down a little bit. Uh, Golden Dish Jackpot looks good. Like I said, I'll talk about that in a moment. Any prediction for Legacy Optimus Prime and might be like MP. No, the Legacy Optimus, I think, is going to be Laser Prime. I think it's going to be more like that oil tankery dude with the big shoulders. I think it's going to be like Laser Prime. That's my prediction there, Gabriel. Um, it's not going to be like, I mean, you know, you're saying like the MP44 design. The closest we have for that is the Kingdom Earthrise one. I don't see them doing a better G1 Optimus than that. They, they'll try it, and I'm sure it'll be fine. I don't think it's going to be better. Um, but I've heard that this Optimus, Gabriel, is going to be Laser Prime for what for what that's worth. I like the photos of Shadow Panther, who's uh, with those black shoulders, uh, but the one that has yellow shoulders, I feel like they should have gone with the one in the photo shoot. Whatever, I've already passed. So we, I actually did see Shadow Panther here, which shocked me. I passed him three or four times. I'm not getting him. I'm not even remotely interested in that mold again. Uh, 23 Ratchet sounds like an extended version of the 12 Days of Christmas song. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, let's see. Love my trans art. Yeah, man. The trans art lad is great. Right, Warren? My wife actually found that for me as well as Waspinator. Uh, my first time getting the Beast Wars series for me. I know I, a lot of people like the Waspinator. I'm not interested in that either. I, I don't know if it's that it looks like a bad custom to me or if I don't like that it's a bit smaller than the T30 or if it has too much of a nod to animated. Like, I don't think it's bad. And if you didn't have the T30, like, get the kingdom. Because I, I don't think it's bad. But it's not landing for me, if that makes sense. I think it's fine, but there's nothing about it landing for me. If they were to repaint it and make it look more like Beast Wars with less purple, maybe a bit of a more muted yellow or gold or something i might be more into it but as it is i'm 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 not i'm just i'm not um prices do need to increase sometimes but it shouldn't be the only trick in the book master fire and that's all hasbro got is raised prices you know i, I had this discussion earlier and people said it's weird that it just happened in canada it didn't just happen in canada but i hear a lot of people saying for example in the u.s like target yeah, Jay. Jay said that he's been saying, paying the same prices since 2018. Since 2018, our prices have gone up 75% here. I can't speak for other countries, but I can tell you that he's saying there they haven't gone up at all. Here they've gone up 75%. There's there's something wrong. Like there's something seriously wrong. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. You're right, Master Fire. Sometimes prices got to go up. Not 75% in three years. Um. They're bringing out the, uh, are they bringing out a new wasp? Yeah, new wasp is wave four, bri, bri. Um, Black Agent is awesome, I agree. Why is an exclusive supposed to cost more, Master Fire? Because it's exclusive? So what? And, you know, is it supposed to be a deluxe that costs a liter? No, it, I mean, they're, they're scamming. It's a greedy price. Let's be realistic. There's zero reason why that should be the price of a liter other than greed. Um, funny though, because creator and corporate men are going to talk about exclusives a little bit later. So no, you saying exclusives are supposed to cost more is part of the problem. If that's your understanding, then that's part of the problem because you're feeding in to their valuation. There's zero reason. I got the exclusive um, slingshot, whatever his name was, back in the day from Combiner Wars, and I got the exclusive Wild Rider from Combiner Wars. And guess what? They were the exact same price as retail. It's just they were at a specific retailer. So no, you're not supposed to pay more. You're supposed to go to a specific retailer for it. I would suggest to you that something like this Ravage set will only be at EB Games in Canada. Fine. You got to go to EB Games to get it. There's no reason you should be paying uh, a later class price for it, though. And maybe there's more in the box. Maybe there's more in the box than that that somehow makes up a later price point. I I, I haven't heard of it, but I don't know. Um, hunt for alternators, uh, battle ravage. That's an, also a good idea uh, that you could do. Um, 
it's a convention. I'm not buying it. That's what I said. Nobody should. And it's not a convention exclusive. It's a Pulse exclusive. The, they don't have a higher budget. Where are you getting this stuff from, Master Fire? No, they don't have an, a higher budget. What they were told is, here's your budget. Disperse it, which is what they're doing in a very different and unique way than what they've done in the past. Problem is, some of it is working. Some of it isn't. Um, going to get what? You all know I'm going to get what? What are you talking about? Withhold all judgment till you get it. I don't know what you're talking about. And why are you calling it convention exclusive? I don't know what you're talking about anymore. Honestly, I don't know what you're talking about, Master Fire. I'm sorry you lost me. Um, <laughs> send one your way, Big M. Like, here's the thing. If I see it in the store, I would be happy to send one to someone. I'd be happy to do that. Let me take a look at it, but I don't want it. You're going to tell me... WFC Toys and PW Toys don't feel different. No, the PW Toys feel better. Much better. I had no QC issues with uh, Prime Wars at all. Zero. I've had a ton with War for Cybertron. A ton. The QC is down the toilet. So, yeah, I actually prefer Prime Wars. Uh, Nemesis Prime Siege Mold is out at Smith Toys. Oh, nice. Get it. The Nemesis Prime is... Tremendous. Do it. Uh, pricing needs to change to keep all happy. Like, I, it does, but, you know, I mean, it is what it is. Q, Q, QC can change from figure to figure. Only with War for Cybertron. And I feel, look at tracks. Look at all of the QC variation there. Mine are perfect. But everybody says theirs are loosey-goosey and floppy and stuff. Like, you know, I've never seen this level of inconsistency as we're getting now. I don't know. I don't understand what you're saying, Master Fire. I know I don't agree with any of it. That's all I can tell you, bro. Uh, hey, Shanzi. Uh, So, Golden Disc came out. I think Golden Disc, for the most part, is exactly what exclusive should be. I think it's exactly what exclusive should be. Let me explain. First, we have a pretty neat story. I read the whole thing on uh, Amazon today. None of these are actually orderable yet on Amazon.ca. It all says currently unavailable. Why? I don't know, because they're all orderable in the U.S. I'll be very interested to see what the prices are in Canadian compared to their U.S. counterparts. Um, and here's the thing. We had Puffer and Road Ranger that are exclusive. So they should be. That makes perfect sense to me because they're not mainline. Not everybody knows them. That makes perfect sense to me. Yeah, you should probably be exclusive. Then we had the like the Mutant Tigatron. I get that. I mean, a lot of people will want Tigatron. Put him out. Make him accessible to everyone at regular retail. Somebody who loves the mold and loves the mutant head sculpt or something might say, hey, I'm going to double dip and go in again on that mold. I love it. I'm going to order it. And then we have um, Jackpot. Again, some people would definitely, well, a lot of people would want Jazz. So put that out regular retail. Not everyone even knows Action Master Jackpot. I'll say this, though. They chose the best mold for it. If you do know Action Master Jackpot, this jazz mold is ideal for it, really. And they even explained that now he gets the ability to transform because of him getting pulled back in time and stuff. Neat. Cool. I get that. And they even say that his little partner gets a new alt mode. I don't know yet if I'm in for Jackpot. I haven't pre-ordered it. Um, I'm not the hugest fan of the jazz mold. It's good. Uh, a little bit. I find it a little bit um, delicate, so I'm not sure yet, but I do like the look of it. And if you're in for it, I totally get it. All three of those should be exclusive. I understand why they are not mainstream. They're not going to be for everyone, but they will be for people that are hardcore fans that want to be in for that. And then we have the fourth chapter, Pterosaur. Pterosaur is mainline. Pterosaur should just go out in regular retail. Hey, Ninja Bill. But instead, they put him here. Now, some people have said two things here. One, they have said this is a repaint. We will get a mainline pterosaur. Interesting. Some people have said, nope, this is what we're getting here. The mainline is going to have a laser beak. Interesting. I bought the pterosaur, or I pre-ordered ordered the pterosaur, because I want that pterosaur. Plus, it's based on the... 
um, uh, like air razor mold. And I adore that mold. One of my favorite molds in a long time. So totally in for it for Pterosaur. I get it. Few changes. Uh, and I've heard that he is a bit bigger. So it might be something more akin to um, I'll spit this out in a minute. More akin to Tigatron. I don't know. We'll see because the pricing I believe was twenty two ninety nine, which I thought was a deluxe pricing in the U.S. Somebody can correct me if I'm wrong. Hopefully, it's a bit bigger, but we'll see. I I'm in for it. I like it. I think it looks tremendous. But a lot of people are going to complain and say, "Yeah, why did you make that an exclusive? It's a main character." And I think here's why they did that. I think they did. You know what? I'm not even going to say. It. We're going to save it for creator and uh, corporate man which we're going to get to in just a moment. But I think there was a logic in doing it that way that not everybody's going to agree with, but I think there was a logic doing that, doing it that way. I would say three out of four of these very much should be exclusive. The fourth one, I think was done in a very strategic way for a very strategic reason. And then we have Victory Saber. Let's talk about old Victory Saber for a moment. So he got back. To, I mean, was there ever a doubt? Like, you didn't seriously, honestly doubt he was going to get back, right? Because there was never any doubt. It was always going to happen. You know, it was never not going to happen. All of this is all this is a facade. Now the question is, will it get the tears? I would argue the tears should just be included anyway now that it's back. Last I looked, we are just over 12,000. So as I'm seeing it, we have, what, eight, nine days for this to get to... Another eight or nine thousand, whatever it is that needs to get to uh, eight thousand, I think, to get to that twenty thousand. I struggle with the valuation um, as it currently is. I do see the valuation better with the tiers included. You add extra value and don't increase that price. I, I kind of see it. I was absolutely against the existence of the Unicron. Not here. Not against the existence of this. I do think the tears should just be automatically included. I think that gives you the full value for your buying dollar. It's still the only thing now that leaves a bad taste in my mouth is that it's crowdfunding a multi-billion dollar company. Shouldn't be like that. But I do think that the value here is right. I think there were lessons that were learned in the past that were applied here for the better. Not perfect, but for the better. Now, I'm going to talk about those exclusives. I have to get in character. I have to get in character. Creator and corporate man. Creator when the glasses are off. Corporate man when the glasses are on. Oh, no. Not one of these again. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I've got a brilliant idea. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh. Come in my office. I've got a brilliant idea. Oh, okay. What's your brilliant idea? We're going to make more money. Uh, that's your department. I was, I was doing some designs. Desi I was, I was doing designs for, you know, characters that I, that I love, that the fans love. I got some great ideas here too. Would you like to hear them? Later, later, later. No, like really, look, here, here's my design for Tigatron, right? Here's my design for Tigatron. And I went back, I was looking at my design for Studio Series uh, uh, 86 Jazz. I was really proud of that, you know? It turned out so well. Tigatron? Jazz. You know what? This ties right into my brilliant idea. You seem creepy excited about this brilliant idea. What's your brilliant idea? Hear me out. Exclusives. We will put things in one store, one location, and people can buy only from there. Sometimes we'll even mark it up a whole bunch. They'll, they'll pay more because you pay more for exclusives. They'll be happy to do it. It won't bother them at the least. I mean, you could, but why don't we just put all the product out for people to buy that are fans wherever they go 
and then we get more sales per capita overall and then everybody's happy Yeah, but some of these retailers are also paying us a premium to carry the exclusives. So we got this idea. Okay, so we're working with this huge retailer, online retailer, Amazon something. Amazon. I think that's what you're working with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're great. They're online retailer. We're doing this golden disc series. Now, I've been trying to think of the ideas for it. And I was looking at, you know, your huffer. You know, your huffer. So I was looking at some ideas for that. And I saw like, you know some uses of it in some other countries. And then I saw this GoBot that kind of looked like it. And I was like, why don't we just slap some colors on that and we'll call it part of it. And then I had this other brilliant idea. Let's make it four things. And the whole picture will give us a big golden disc like on Beast Wars. Remember Beast Wars and the golden disc? So we'll do four exclusives. Hmm, okay. I, I think I could probably get behind that because, so what you're saying is let's do like, we have Huffer and we have pipes like coming out. They're already coming out. Well, Huffer's already out. Pipes is coming real soon. You're saying take that mold and we could repaint, which was something I think you talked about last week, like, like we did with the Seekers. We could repaint it and do like this GoBot guy and we could do a recolor like, uh, like, like, like the Puffer, right? We could make Puffer. Bingo. So what else could we do? What else could we add to that? Okay, uh, how about how about we add, let me think. You know, I was looking at Jazz here and thinking about who else has a similar type of like body like that. What about we, we do something really at left field? Go on. Hear me out. Action Masters. Blah! Action Masters. Nobody wants Action Masters. Ah, what if the Action Master could transform? Go on. Okay. Okay. Here we go. So he could be Jackpot. Jackpot looked a lot like Jazz, man. Like it's it's a really good one. I, I think that that could work. And I think the third one that we could do, I think the third one we could do could be um, uh, you know what? I'm really kind of digging Tigertron here now. We didn't do the whole mutant mask thing here, so why don't we why don't we give him a mutant mask head like we did with Shadow Panther? I like the mutant mask heads myself. I thought they were fun. We could recolor him. It would work as an exclusive. I don't think it would really work in the main line. It's not gonna be for everyone, but it would work as an exclusive. So that's that's three out of four. What can we do for the last one? We need a hook because nobody's ever heard of these things you're saying. A hook? Who are some main Beast Wars characters? You know, some of the main ones that were on the show, like some core ones, some really important, like dig in your teeth ones, like dig in your nails ones that fans would really want. Okay, so there's Optimus Primal, he's out, Rat Trap, uh, Cheetor, Black Arachnia, uh, Megatron, Scorponok, uh, Pterosaur, Bingo. We've been working on Pterosaur. Pterosaur repaint? Yeah, we could probably do... Mm -mm, not a repaint. Pterosaur. Yeah, but the fans are going to just generally want him. Fan schmans, they'll go where we offer it. So we put out a pterosaur, all the fans will buy that guy. And now we got the picture for the golden disc. So guess what? All the fans are going to want the whole picture. So even if they don't care about the other ones, they're still going to get it. And for us, it's gobs of money. No more remolding, just a little bit of paint. Eh. We the mutant head. I guess that's some new uh, molding, but like it's so minor. Who cares? Most of it's just gonna be some new paint. But slap it on, put it in a nice looking box. The fans will love it. Mm, yeah, because the fans just adore when we put mainline figures and characters as exclusives. <laughs> And scene. I gotta find a better way to do that. But you get it, right? You guys get it, right? Man, there's something that's seriously wrong with me. <laughs> you guys get it, right? Like, I think that it was great that they were exclusives. 
the inclusion of Pterosaur is the hook. I just bought Pterosaur. But there are people out there that will buy him and say, wow, if I'm in four penny, I'm in four pound. I bought him. I do have to get the rest of the sets. I have to get all of them now. Boom. And the hook was Pterosaur. For most people, not everyone, but for 90% of people, that'll be the hook. They'll get him and then they'll say, I need the other ones. Uh, hey, Jay, happy you're here. I'm definitely going to miss some of this now. Uh, we should get the shield and big gun. Uh, yeah, the V, the V lock cannon and the shield and the flight stand, Ryan, all of it should be in there, man. Um, Amazon Canada's price for jackpot is $33.99. What's, what's jackpot's price in the U S puffer set was 58. Uh, that makes sense. Like 58 and 75 is actually not bad. Two deluxes. That seems about right. Honestly. Um, let's see. I had no doubt. Uh, Victor Saber will get back. No, not at all, man. John, you're totally right, man. It was going to get back, right? Uh, what I didn't understand was the massive jump of 8,500 plus and over uh, 12K in two days. Yeah, well, what <laughs> they'll say it came from other sources because it opened up in Taiwan and it opened up in Japan, but. I don't know how many actually came in legitimately, but guaranteed while that funny, I almost was going to do a different version tonight of uh, creator and corporate man about funding where, you know, they were going to have a time going and corporate man was going to be like, ah, throw another 2000 on the fire. And like, they were just going to, you know, let's be realistic. It's very easy for them to just go in. It's their webpage. We're going to be like, yeah, let's just change this. <laughs> That's all you really got to do. Um, a billion dollar Kickstarter. Yeah. The Oscar goes to, thank you, thank you. I, I, I'd i like to think I'm quite good at that. Not. I'm awful. Terrible. Anybody who came apart way through that definitely had to be like, what's wrong with this guy? What sort of condition does he have? Um, let's see. Masterpiece theater. Yeah, exactly, right? My guess is that the, is that with the close of toy stores like, uh, uh, Toy stores, the brands like Hasbro and big stores come up with the idea of exclusives to order to hold on to that distribution model. Yeah, you're probably right, John C., honestly. Um, and I don't think so exclusives in and of themselves are bad. It's a matter of who you slot in as exclusives. All I'm hearing is Chris Griffin. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was good. Chris Griffin. Uh that's the only way I see it hitting almost 300 backers overnight. Yeah. <laughs> They're green. Doomed. A monocle. Let's see. 29. Uh, tw uh, yeah. So like Manitoba there. Now this is, see, this is what, this is what gets me, right? Manitoba just said, that where is it? It went up and I lost it. Oh man. Oh, where is he? Um, I'm sorry, Manitoba. I lost it again. I have a strong feeling that they'll be a cartoon, uh, Acrocolor Pterosaur and Legacy. Maybe there might be, uh, Ryan. To be honest, Victory Saber was moving pretty slow, of course. I seem to be gaining a split personality. But Manitoba said there, he said $22.99 in the U.S., which is thirty-one currently $31.98 Canadian. So why is it $33.99? Or in some places, $34.99. Like you're tacking on an extra couple of dollars there when already the prices are inflated. Because I would argue that $22.99 in the U.S. is too much, to be honest with you. Especially when I still hear of some people saying that they're paying eighteen ninety nine and nineteen ninety nine, so you have eighteen ninety nine, nineteen ninety nine, and now the MSRP of twenty two ninety nine. I'd say a lot of stores are saying no, we're sticking with eighteen and nineteen ninety nine because guess what, twenty two ninety nine too high for what this is. I think a lot of stores in the U.S. aren't doing the MSRP in Canada because there's little competition. They're pushing the MSRP. The MSRP is too high. That's the problem. Um. What will be your uh, price threshold going forward before you quit collecting the mainline? Well, here's the thing, Don. 
Like I would have, there was a time not long ago, I would have gotten all of the golden disc collection. Not because I needed the characters, but like, cool, why not? I'm getting one now. I don't really get anything studio series unless it's 86. And even then it will depend on what it is. I don't get anything from any other lines. Um, I'm going to be cherry picking in legacy and stuff. So like, I'm already severely cutting back, severely cutting back. And there's things that I just don't wonder, like I'm not getting Shadow Panther. I'm not getting Waspinator because I love the Thrilling 30 Waspinator. I don't like the Cheetor mold. So why am I wasting what will equate to about $80 on those when I don't want them? So Don, you're, uh, or Don, you're asking a question that I'm already slowly doing, right? Uh, hey, Razor Bear. Then we will open an Amazon pre-orders, but neglect to tell anyone. Ah, ah, oh, there you go. I found Manitoba's thing there. Just took me a little while to get to it. Um, it was always going to happen. There is no way they did not have the market research already. Oh yeah, they knew it was going to happen. Go, new shirt, go on. Uh, I think you need a, a top hat so you don't have to take your glass off every time. I might. I might need something else. I'm still still working on it. We'll probably end up giving them their own show at some point, but we're still working on it. Um, I think Jackpot is a very lucky bot. Like, I think he's always like a gambler, to be honest with you, Keldeo. I think that kind of goes right in line, buddy. Uh, okay, so... We got that done. Whew, news is done. Let's get very quickly to our trivia. And then we will do this week's minor unboxing. And then we're going to get out of here. Trivia this week comes to us from our buddy, Dragonfly. And Dragonfly says uh, two questions this week. One, of course, is our usual trivia. And then we have a bonus question. In this one, I thought this was a good one. I don't think I'm going to go crazy with Legacy. See, even Jay. Jay finds everything early. Even He's not going crazy with Legacy. In the episode of Raider and King Arthur's Court. Starscream makes wire for his Electro Dynamo. What metal does he use to make the wire out of? A, gold, B, copper, C, bronze, or D, nickel? What does Starscream make the wire for his electric domino out of in uh, medieval times? Does he make it out of A, gold, B, copper, C, bronze, or D, nickel? Input is F, of course. Shansi is saying B with a question mark. B is copper. Uh, gold, says Runus. Uh, a. Deluxes are $24.99 US. That's insane. Plus tax, Devlin. That's insane. That's insane. I'm sorry. Uh, hey, Colin. A, A, B's, D with a question mark. Some A's. Copper says Bri Bri. All of the above says J. A. A. Uh, it is gold. He made it from gold, from jewels, and from coins. Bonus question. What else did he come up with in that episode? What other substance did he make in that episode? This is not... This is not a um, uh, multiple choice one. What else did he make? Ah, Ken found a Ken set of gunpowder. Indeed, he did, sir. Absolutely. Indeed, he did. Both of those were pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. Dragonfly, pretty good, buddy. Okay, so our unboxing this week. One is very simple, very small. Ah, and I'm going to show it here now. I just have to, I just have to figure out kind of how this, oh, this way, this way, pardon me. So a while ago, we looked at he who really kind of rounds up my Decepticon combiners being Dino King or Monstructor, if you prefer that name. And with him, uh, there were a bunch of blasters that went together to give him this huge blaster. And I mentioned how there's also a big axe, but I didn't have the axe. And I didn't mind that I didn't have the axe. Well, leave it to our buddy Razor Bear to come through with the axe. It's actually in the hand. And he's actually down there. He was in the thumbnail with me. Um, this is a gigantic axe. He holds it way down here. I wish it was up higher. But when you see him use it in the program, this is actually pretty darn accurate. There is a peg here, so you can put this on his back as well. 
Uh, it, I do find that like when you put it in his wrist, like it does tend to make his like I'm holding onto the wrist. Like it does, it is it is pretty heavy, right? So you got to find the right spot for him to hold it. But really happy to have that. Dino King is better. I like Dino King. Um, 1999 in New York. Wow. It is a big X, man. And the other thing that I got was a pre-order that came in. And it's one that I think Jay has been waiting on me for. And it's Rhinox, the Kingdom Rhinox. And of course, when we look at him, we will look at him next to the Generations Rhinox. I have heard nothing but bad things about this Rhinox. I really have. And I only looked at him briefly last night. I have already asked Starscream Wife, which one does she think looks better? She has chosen the Kingdom. Uh, she has not handled them yet or anything. So we will see. I definitely need to practice this guy more. Uh, those legs, buddy. Something else. So there you go. That's it for this week. It's the week that was, man. It's the week that was. Anyway, that's it. I'm going to get out of here because I still have a ton of stuff to do. I appreciate you guys coming by. Give me some of your extremely valuable time. I do know how important it is to you. If you're in a position to help the channel to grow, you can use the donate link. Check us out on Patreon. See what we offer to you through Teespring. Or, of course, hit the join button right here on YouTube to become a channel member. While you're at it, hit the subscribe button. Stick around and have some fun with us here on the channel. Know that I love you all and that somehow, someway, each and every single day, you all do make a difference. Every child matters. Big movement here. A big, important day here. Look it up. Get yourself always educated. I appreciate every one of you more than you'll ever know. Have a beautiful weekend. Whew. And I look forward, baby, to the next time that you and I get together to have another visit either right here in the live streams on Thursday nights at the Stop Motion Premieres or the Old Fashioned Way. And tomorrow, by the way. Tomorrow, the old-fashioned way, we're going to be looking at uh, Shattered Glass Blur. I look forward to getting together with you inside the, as I go over here, videos.